you. You still with me? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> welcome to the sexiest edition of Nick's Nonfiction. I'm Nick Muniz. Today on the show, February themed, we've got Steve Harvey's Act Like a Lady, Think Like a Man. How do you blind a woman? You put a windshield in front of her. What's the most common sleeping position for women? Around. Why do women have periods? Because they deserve them. If you think I hate women, you're an idiot. This is for comedic effect. We've got some announcements. First up, I'm gay. Now, I'm still not trying to be a teacher or any of that. We are going to extend the show to the hour format. And again, I'm not wasting your time. We're going to go through the book for the first half an hour. And then for the second half an hour, I'm just turning into my radio show, Inside the Niche with DJ Niche. Play some music. Actually, YouTube will fuck me if I do that. But yeah, people like a timestamp more than they like actual value. So I will literally just put my thumb up my ass for the last 30 minutes of this show. It's all out of love. <laughs> Today's the most combative episode of the year. Men versus women. In March, we do Women's Month and reunite the sexes. Ladies, listen up. Why are you asking each other how men think? Why don't you ask a man how men think? That's Steve's entire point for the book. Come to the source. He has this 90-day probationary period. He's telling women don't have sex with men for three months. <laughs> Steven, what are you talking about? <laughs> He's, he calls it sexual benefits, like it's a job. Steve Harvey worked at Ford Motor Company, and they had this thing where, like, until you bought a Ford, they didn't give you health or dental insurance. Not a bad idea, but, I mean, he's a corporate comedian, and he's selling love. Steve Harvey didn't get on stage until he was 27. I got 10 years on this motherfucker. Steve, gotta give it to him. He's got one of the best deadpan faces all of TV, family feud rules. It's about the same amount of expressions as Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> if I'm ever on Family Feud, I'm going to make my answer your butthole. That way Steve Harvey has to yell out, show me your butthole. <laughs> men versus women today. Why are men sexier than women? Because you can't spell sexy without X and Y. <laughs> I'm so smart, I have extra chromosomes. You gotta slow it down because it's an hour fucking show. <laughs> he says behind the laughter is a sincere desire to help women understand men. So you got Seinfeld on stage, men and women. Even back to fucking Lenny Bruce, men are like dogs, women are cats. He's actually going deeper than them. Can we try to fucking understand each other rather than doing surface level bullshit? Bro, I love Seinfeld. We're going to make today basically an entire sitcom because I'm done talking about theory. Situational. Steve shares more relationship wisdom. Does it feel like your man's friends are against you? What should you know about being a wife? Lots of good questions to answer. Steve's kind of outdated though, honestly guys. He's talking about Jenny from the block out here. I'll be talking about dating apps, how Zoomers are obsessed with femboys. It's a problem. The lack of love in society, an abundant underbelly of kinksters. Bro. <laughs> I'm on the websites, but I'm not gonna tell you my name. My penis isn't on there, don't worry. People are fucking into weird stuff nowadays. You know how easy it is to join the piss club? Show up and you're in. <laughs> my boss told my coworkers to work on team bondage. So we went to the sex shop. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back. It's time for Steve. We come for you tonight. Welcome to Steve. <laughs> These celebrity families gonna be battling it out for twenty-five bucks. Let's meet the families. It's the well, well. How you been, man? Thank you very much. How you been, man? Thank you very much. Good, good, good. Thank How you, you been, very much. man? Who is this? This is my beautiful wife. All right, Kim. Chris, introduce everybody. All right. Well, next, is, all right, next, and then we have. Who else we got? All right, and then we. Yes! <laughs> this is my beautiful wife. Hey, darling. Wife. How you doing? Yee! <laughs> He asked a hundred women. How you been, man? Thank you very much. About the author, Steve Harvey. Got some fun facts. Number one, his first name isn't Steve. It's Broderick. He was born in 1957. Number two, he grew up in West Virginia. 
Fun fact number three, his first stand-up set was at 27. I already told you. I got him beat. I did 600 people when I was fucking 17. In the 70s, he lived out of a Ford Tempo with a cooler in his back seat. (laughs) That's about to be my life in August. Stay tuned. Many fun announcements all year. Number five, his first sitcom was 1994, Me and the Boys. It ranked top 20 on the charts, and it was still canceled. Steve Harvey, man, he's the original warrior in cancel culture. (laughs) What does Steve Harvey refer to hookers as? Fast money. (laughs) How do you know your girlfriend is getting fat? She fits into your wife's dress. What books do women like the most? Their husband's checkbook. We'll be right back with the show. My heart. I loved her. Chapter 1, Act Like a Lady, Think Like a Man, The Mindset of a Man. Quote, If there's three things I've discovered during my journey here on God's earth, it's this. A. Too many women are clueless about men. B. Men get away with a whole lot of stuff in relationships because women have never understood how men think. And C. I've got some valuable information to change all of that. Steve, Uh, spitting some facts out here. Too many women are clueless uh, and they get their information from other women. And he says, I got all my information doing a radio show called Ask Steve. Women were plagued with these ideas. Dating, commitment, security, family baggage, hopes for tomorrow, spirituality, in-law drama, body image, aging, friendship, children, work balance, education. Sounds relaxing. Men think about this. Money, cars, boobs. Money, cars, boobs. And it just goes on a circuit all day. Women are fucking thinking about all this bullshit. Quote. They want the emotions that they turn on full blast to be met with the same intensity, and they expect the premium that they put on the commitment to be equally adhered to, valued, and respected. Sounds exhausting. (laughs) Like, part two is just don't cheat. He's like, respect your woman. And you see women are kind of lowering their standards out there. They're like, I just need a guy that's not going to be a scumbag. And they still date scumbags. (laughs) So yeah, just be nice to chicks, and then the first part of that was going, what women really want, if you're going to try to put up with it, is, whoa, you bought that dress? Spin around, spin around again, oh my god! Like, they should have their girlfriends to do that for them, but they're trying to get hit with the same emotions they're feeling. This quote is pretty dank. Steve kind of sums up the entire men-women paradigm. When I step back from the jokes and the microphone get turned off and the lights in the studio go down and I think about what women ask me every morning on my show, I get incredibly perplexed. Perplexed because even though my callers have presumably some experience with men, whether they are friends, boyfriends, lovers, husbands, brothers, coworkers, these women still genuinely want to know how to get to the love they need. I gotta fucking break away from the quote here. Wants, needs, deserves. That was probably the best bit of last year's show. Men need sex. It's a human need to have sex. But we don't deserve it, right? Because women are the gatekeepers. And you are. I'm not taking that away from you. But we don't deserve sex, I guess. We don't need it. So women need love. Do they need it? And the comparison I made, I'm botching it right now, is that orphans, they need parents. But do they deserve parents? (laughs) Orphans have to take their parents out on a date. Steve's quote, Women need love. I've concluded that the truths they seek are never as obvious that they are to us men. Try as they might, women just don't get us. (laughs) 
It'll keep getting deeper. But there's not much to get here. They just don't get us. So, like, stop stressing out. Your wife is yelling at you. They don't fucking understand us. We're just the baseline, bro. We keep the temperature, the thermostat. <laughs> That's what every man is obsessed with. We need to keep the temperature. And they're expecting you to hit the high notes with them. Oh, we're excited right now. No, I'm the fucking baseline. Quote, brokers and bankers, guys who drive trucks, guys who coach basketball teams, ministers, deacons, boy scout leaders, store managers, ex-cons, inmates, and yes, even hustlers. One simple thing is true about all of us. We are very simple people. <laughs> So, men, we're really simple, and bitches still can't fucking understand how dumb we are. How dumb are they? That was the joke I was going for. <laughs> like, I speak for all men when I say this. Blow me. There's not much to get. Blow me. Chicks would rather blow things out of proportion. <laughs> this is like the final time I'll reiterate his point before we skip ahead. Expecting a man to respond to you the same way as responding, it's never going to work. We don't have that emotional capability. Steve's going, my mom and dad were married for 64 years. It's a life sentence right there. The mindset of a man, quote, until he's achieved his goals in those areas, the man you're dating, committed to, or married will be too busy to focus on you. That's a huge point. We're going to hit it again. But for the moment you're born to the moment you're dead as a man, your, your worth is what you do. <laughs> so, like, unless you... Well, I don't know, understand what bitches are complaining about. You're, you get to be beautiful. <laughs> Whereas men, it's just how hard are you working for me? And I'm not saying this is right. Okay, yeah, I got to go the other way, bro. I'm a fucking capitalist. You guys know I have ambition and I just want to get shit done. <laughs> but this is not the way to happiness, bro. If you actually want to be fucking happy, yes, you just spend time with your loved one. <laughs> it's not hard. But, like, think about how hard this mind fucked boomers. Unless you can strip yourself from that conditioning of America, you're just going to burn yourself to a nub. It's the American dream, baby. <laughs> like, I think Zoomers might be fixing the divorce rate because we're waiting to get married. Boomers are freaking out. You guys are being procrastinating. Or maybe they're just being patient. <laughs> the divorce rate is 50%. Yeah, he's going. It's not going to work out for everybody unless we think the same. Let's get back to Steve. If men aren't pursuing their dreams, if we're not chasing the who we are, the what we do, and the how much we make, we're doomed. Dead. From the moment I became a comedian, I stepped onto that stage ready to be the very best. Steve's got the fire of a thousand suns. Let's go. I don't know if it's in all men, but it's encoded in some of our hyperactive DNA, bro. Chicks hate to hear it. The dream is bigger than the pussy. <laughs> Many of you figure that if a man truly loves you, the two of you should be able to pursue your dreams together. <laughs> Moving along. Chapter 2. Man Love. You ever see the jazz drummer movie, Miles Teller? I'm bringing this up because I don't want to... But in that movie, Miles Teller, he's going to be the next like Leonardo DiCaprio. He breaks up with his girlfriend because he has a dream... And she tells him, you're crazy. Like, so we just can't be together? He's like, you're going to resent me eventually. Do you not see it yet? I'm not going to be able to just rub your feet every night. <laughs> it's a fucking paradox. He goes back and talks to his coach. And he's like, yeah, bro, she only liked you because you have an ambitious dream. And now she wants to break up with you because you're obsessed with it. It doesn't make sense. You got to kind of put things away for a little while. It'll all lead to resentment, honestly. Like, <laughs> you have to be fucking crazy to want to achieve certain goals. That's where the greatness comes from. The man love, bro. Like, women don't want to hear it. Family comes second to business. That's what I'm trying to get at, bro. If You can't have a family if you don't get your business in order. And these bit, I'll, I'll just change him and make him a businessman. <laughs> People change themselves. Have you not realized this yet? Quote, 
Nothing on this planet can compare with a woman's love. It is kind and compassionate, patient and nurturing, generous, sweet, unconditional and pure. That was beautiful. <laughs> it fucking stands the test of time. A woman's love? Holy shit, till death do us part? It's illogical. Oh, you cheated on me? I still love you. <laughs> Girls. Like, even if a girl looked at a guy the wrong way, I would throw her across the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> Man love, woman love. He's talking about the spell this chapter. I don't care. I'll go hippie on it. The first stages of love are unconditional, and then over time it turns into man love, like he's saying. Like girls at my work, they come in asking, so if a man likes a woman, he'll do anything for her, right? Anything, right? <laughs> I'm like, I don't fucking know, bro. Everybody has their lines, okay? There's no... Steve has a quote here, it's better than... Like, it's not, he'll do anything, he'll tell anyone. This is the quote. If your man loves you, he's willing to tell anybody and everybody. Look, man, this is my woman. This is my girl, my baby's mama. This is my lady, my boo thing. I might have ended some at the end there. <laughs> you know this. Girls are always chomping at the bit asking for a title. Like, if you could have some patience, when the man is ready, he's going to title you out. Steve fucking... He starts to pander a little bit. When a man truly loves you, anybody who says, does, or suggests anything about you offensive stands the risk of being obliterated. Your man will destroy anything and everything in his path to make sure whoever disrespected you pays for it. Okay. I'm saying everybody has their line. If macho man Randy Savage hits on my girl... This is an opportunity for me to create an entirely new life. <laughs> Thank you, Randy. You've just given me the reset. <laughs> I'm saying everybody has their lines, bro. Like, I don't understand how these dating podcasts go on for years because it's the same question every time. How do I know he likes me? You'll fucking know. You know what I'm saying here? You can't just... There's no such thing as hard rules. I'm a fucking philosopher, people. <laughs> it's... Uh... This is all philosophical Don Juanism. Like, for real, these chicks at the liquor store, they will say, a man only likes you if he's willing to fight for you. Bitch, my mixed martial arts career is in retirement. I hung up my WWE belt long ago. If you can't get through adulthood without physical confrontation, I don't want you near my children, my family. <laughs> these fucking bitches. He's got to fight for you. It's the dumbest shit I've ever heard. Quote, once he says he cares about you, you are a prized possession to him. He will do anything to protect that prized possession. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I just haven't felt the love strong enough. <laughs> I think real life is a little bit more soggy. A little bit more in between. <laughs> Steve's making it vibrant. This is a bestseller. Like, he's just, this whole chapter is just defining the relationship. Label talk. I'll tell girls, like, I don't really want to be with anyone else right now. In that moment, that is the moment of truth. You're going to see if her eyes are darting around. She reaches for her own her phone to see if the guy texted her. Bro, it's not hard. Ask straightforward questions. That's what these girls are afraid of. <laughs> you could tell right away. <laughs> he said men give nicknames to people they love, so if a dude's already calling you fish twat he loves you <laughs> quote in some ladies you have to stop heaping your own definition of love on men and recognize that men love differently a man's love fits only into three categories as i've explained it the three p's of love profess provide and protect and penis <laughs> chapter three why men do what they do let me get a random soundboard here Going fast. It's me beating off in the rafters of the women's locker room. At the gym, I'm currently banned from the sauna. <laughs> Why do men do what they do? I would think it's because they want to have sex with you. Why do men do anything? Why does that guy have a fedora on? He thinks it makes him attractive. There's different levels to this. Like, I'm saying people are obsessed with pussy. Some people are obsessed with money. 
Like when a man approaches you, he's not asking you for your hand in marriage. He made the approach. This is the man. The approach is seeing what it will take to sleep with you. It's the first of the negotiations. Oh my God, why did he take my number and never call me? He saw your course's workload and then unenrolled in the class. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> Bro, it's, um, it's a workload at a certain point. Here's a generalization from Steve. In my experience, it's true. Women love to sit and talk for no apparent reason but to talk. But we men, we're just not cut out to chit-chat. <laughs> Like, a man will not fucking approach you and talk to you unless he's clueless. Men are goal-oriented. If there's not an attainable goal set up, then we're going to lose interest. That's why I'm saying his three-month probation might be a little long. <laughs> Women, you're fully in control. You get to raise and lower your standards. It's a seller's market. But the buyer still gets to choose who to pursue. Like, think of it like a nightclub, bro. If the club is good enough, anybody will fucking wait in line. It's, um... Let's just go for it, bro. <laughs> I didn't say I was going to be nice today. Prostitution. Why do men do what they do? The, the first time you're with a prostitute, it clears everything up. And, like, all these chicks on OnlyFans now will just match with you on Tinder. I'm looking for a partner in crime. I'll do your tryout and then don't call me. <laughs> Prostitution is the oldest fucking profession. Let's not tiptoe around this shit. Once money was introduced to sex, I'm saying the buyer-seller paradigm was born. So we we don't know what free love is. The kids in the 60s still have no fucking idea. Women are inadvertently putting prices on their pussy every time they get in a hippie bus. They get into a guy's convertible, whatever it is. It's these, like, medieval requests. Materialism. It killed art. It killed sex. There's always a monetary incentive. <laughs> I could draw this out to, like, what's a whore or a slut? Is she trying to get something out of you? Nick's nonfiction, the whore versus slut paradigm. <laughs> I'm serious, dudes. Just... Take the 300 bucks, have sex with a fucking OnlyFans girl, and you will understand everything. Quote, a man fishes for two reasons. He's either fishing for sport or fishing to eat. So men are trying to eat you, Jeffrey Dahmer. If you just really listen to a man, they'll tell you your intentions. If you listen to anyone... As a woman, you're the seller, so you are responsible for asking the customer what they're shopping for. The <laughs> When you're a customer, you could be a skeezy little fuck. You're a shop owner. That's like you have so much more responsibility as a woman. True sentence here. Every word you say, quote, every move you make, every signal you give to a man will help him determine whether he should try to play you, be straight with you, or move on to the next woman. I'm saying unless he's clueless. And every girl is actually obsessed with that movie, Clueless. That's a good one. It's about being Hollywood royalty. It's like a parody movie, so it's self-aware. It's pretty good. One of the deep, deeper levels of it, it's this main chick, the little rich girl. She's trying to set up the ugly new girl at school and give her a makeover to see if one of the hot guys will chase her. The deeper truth in the film, it's a good one. The chick chooses to ignore the fact that she's not in control. The entire try she's trying to play Cupid. It's not the patriarchal man deciding who he's going to be with. It's all about timing. Like, if you think I'm trying to say men have all the power today, it's all about the universe, man. It's not the witchy woman with a bomb-ass pussy. This stuff is up to love, bro. You can influence it, but you can't control it. We're already off the rails. I'll keep sounding gay. Love is an energy. Eros. You can, like, create a shield, an acumen of love surrounding you. But you can never pull the final string and just manifest the loved one into your life. Like, I'm saying work on your love. Radiate that shit. I'm saying to, for anything, for a girl, her goal is to find the man. 
You have to change yourself to be the girl that the man would want. That sounds more coach-like and women-like magic. I'm saying you could fucking prolong the length of the spell if you're in a more dense energy of love. Super gay. Let's get back to this guy. Dating is a lot like a business. <laughs> the best way to become successful is to master and control things you have control over. <sighs> See, that's why I just sounded like a douchebag right there. It's all fucking self-help. <laughs> Fix yourself, bro. You will find the person. It's like these tips. How do I find the one? Join clubs. You join the clubs to find out what you like. And then what you like is what the other person will like. It's not fucking rocket scientist. You have to know about yourself. Me too. I'm gay. I suck. I'm a f it. All of that. I'm not talking down on anyone. I just know everything. <laughs> yes, I'm a know-it-all. Like, um, practical advice. If you're a bigger chick, you can't control what you eat. I'm not saying this is bad. People have that addiction. Control how good of head you give. <laughs> Big girls give the best head. I'm the love guru, bro. I see fucking... <laughs> Why do men do what we do? It's because we're horny and overworked. Chapter 4, The Five Questions. When Steve Harvey came to Hollywood at 38, he met men that he said were balling out of control. He's refusing to drop names, which is annoying. He's like, I'm surrounded by the hottest girls, and the hottest guys are going for average girls. Like, uh... I said Leonardo DiCaprio before. He surely could be with a girl who is his own age and his own intellectual makeup. Or maybe he's doing it for a reason. It's the whole point of this chapter, the five questions. What is he trying to get out of me? Men aren't dumb, okay? We want the upper hand. Like, women are run by their insecurity. They'll fat sabotage you and... <laughs> I don't know, that didn't make sense. This fucking semi-hobo comes into the liquor store the other day. I actually know who he is. He's a skateboarder around town. He's dope as fuck. He's like, hey, yo, my girl BBW right now. I love the thickness. I got the sickness thickness. <laughs> he didn't say that. But he's like, I have this BBW and she's not good enough. I need BBW plus now. <laughs> I was geeking out. This was. <laughs> he actually said, I date these girls because if they want to dump me, there's 10 more fat bitches waiting. <laughs> like This is the shit men will say in the fucking locker room. If you, if men are actually playing out here, there are five questions you can ask to vet them. This feels wrong. Now I'm going against the game. <laughs> you should ask a man, what are your short-term girls? And a man without goals is not a man. That's his whole thing. Number two, what are your long-term goals? And number three, what are your views on relationships? That's a pretty good one. Some people see fucking relationships as, like, survival versus creative mode. That's a video game example. <laughs> you see it on Tinder. I want a man who's going to drive the boat while I drink margaritas. This bitch thinks she's about to landscape the castle of Versailles. Most men are looking for a girl who's ready to swab the poop deck. <laughs> the fourth question, what do you think about me? Boobs, cars, hot, sexy. Now, you got to ask this question... Before the love spell. What do you think about me? Or after? Number five, how do you feel about me? And he's saying that a man will always give you a straight answer. Lies! Quote, When men are fully aware that we have to answer these questions, any real man is going to answer them. You may not necessarily like the answers, but he's going to answer them. And it's true. To a real man, I'm not trying to fucking waste time anymore. My time, your time, anybody's. Find a real fucking man, you'll get the answers. Ending the chapter on the rule he learned in Cleveland before L.A. He was dating a girl that seemed like the real deal. She's sweet and sexy, but something was off. She slept with Steve on the first date. This is when he's got the long quote about Ford. So if Ford and the government won't give a man benefits until he's been on the job and proven himself... Why, ladies, are you passing out benefits to men before they've proven themselves worthy? Come on now. You know what the benefits are. I'm not talking about being nice to him, cooking him, nothing, going out to dinner with him. 
helping him pick out an outfit, bringing him around to your mother. Withhold sex. That's your one weapon. <laughs> like, he's saying corporate war out here. I am truly will take the hippie stand on the love episode. This isn't a fucking battlefield, bro. Pat Benatar, fuck yourself. It's a boundaries. You are sovereign nations coming to do work together. Like, I set up my boundaries. Bitch, do not fucking ask me where I am. And then once she asks me where I am, we're done. I'm ending the fucking relationship. You gotta get geopolitical about this shit. If you advance on my fucking boundaries, I will declare war. <laughs> Violence is the only answer. And that's not true. It's power, which unfortunately gets fucked around with this love. But we're all just trying to think about it within this paradigm where of monogamy. I'm a Muslim. I believe I should have multiple wives. This 90-day rule, it's some fucking, like, 1990s bullshit. <laughs> I think if a girl tries to play hard boy with you, that's why Zoomers are hooking up with femboys in back alleys. Like, just making shit harder and harder at a certain point. <laughs> Maybe you get one or two more thoroughbreds, but th the rest of this shit is going to fall apart. The population is declining, bro. <laughs> Have you ever heard this one? After the advent of porn, the Western woman statistically became the least desirable human on Earth. And what that means is mathematically, if you're in Sudan, every fucking dude is doing anything to get a chick. But when you're in America, there's porn, bro. There's anything to just not have to play in that game. <laughs> so women, if you really want to do, just move to somewhere where guys are desperate as fuck. It's both men and women that don't realize how good they have it here. We're opting out of sex because of items. Porn on one side, rings on the other side. <laughs> is there love anywhere? Where is the love? We're going to go to chapter five. How to get the ring. Quote, your man knows what you want. The ultimate commitment, the ring. I think even girls who have like don't know in their tinder bio they're on a ring hunt when you get old enough you could just smell it it's emanating on these girls every they're smeagol bro me wants the ring <laughs> i gotta use smeagol as my voice one ring to rule them all me wants it chicks become like thanos once they get the ring on their finger they start snapping at the brunch table and all the girls get in order thanos dude <laughs> He has got a quote here. Seal ruined it for all of us. He had built an igloo on top of a glacier 14,000 feet above sea level. It looked like an invitation to the prom. <laughs> Steve Harvey. And the soundboard died, which is going to make the last half hour extra fun. <laughs> That's a pretty good quote here. Fucking women were ruining it for each other with this upstaging one another. I thought you are just supposed to jump over a broom, and that's how you get married. Like, I didn't even take a girl to prom because of this, bro. I didn't want to have to go through the prom proposals and all that. And then, I wasn't bound to one chick the entire weekend. I think a couple of my buddies were jealous about that. <laughs> and, yeah, I don't regret fucking chaining myself down to one person. You see how I'm getting at this point? that I don't even know how to think through the lens of monogamy. I need a fucking Muslim friend to teach me about this multiple wife thing. <laughs> I go Amish. Now think about that shit. I'm sure you guys, we've got young listeners, the promposal thing. Sometimes standards are shooting yourself in the foot because you're always withheld to that fake standard from now on. <laughs> Super deep point. I don't know, don't feel compelled to do things. Quote, This is the story of all too many women, girlfriends, who are putting in some serious work, not only because they love their men, but because they want to prove they're the one. And he capitalized, the one. Everybody is clear about how you prove to him that you are the one. He waited till the last chapter. This is what every girl wants to know, how to get the ring. Forget the standards, bro. Everybody's different. There's no one size fits all. Like, he's doing exactly what you have to. He's choosing the language that he needs to. The one. 
women hate to hear it, but I'm choosing honesty today. There is no the one. There are many the ones. Steve's talking about some mail he got from his dating show. Quote, he tells me he loves me and he wants to have my children. My biological clock is ticking like crazy and we have been trying for the past year to get pregnant to no avail. The problem is that he says he does not want to be in a committed relationship or marriage because he doesn't want to answer to anyone. What's the problem here? He just told you everything you needed to know. <laughs> You were about to have a child with this kid, and he's saying, I don't want to be in the relationship. This is a blessing. This is what it comes down to in most cases. Like, what turns dudes off about type A women is they're trying to manage. I just told you. I put my cards on the table. Stop trying to do things from there. Like, it's business, bro. I think just trying to change people is cluelessness. Watch that movie again. Quote, he told her exactly what his boundaries were, and she is declaring war on those borders. I beat you to it, Steve. It's the whole... I think I fucking hit another home run this episode, bro. He told you where his boundaries are, and you're declaring war on those boundaries. If love is a battlefield, these bitches are committing war crimes. <laughs> Let's go! That's my biggest takeaway from the book. Man love is different blowjobs than girl love. Like, these chicks that come into the liquor store when they have black eyes, I'm telling you, I felt bad at first, but they would say to me, this might be the last time I see you. What am I, fucking Superman? You, I make $16 an hour plus tips. I can't help you. These women want to be dictated. That's what I'm getting at, bro. It's authoritarian versus sovereignty. <laughs> and it's all balanced, bro. I mean, if women didn't have vaginas, we would have killed all them by now. <laughs> but literally, women are very different from men. <laughs> he says women have more choice in society than men. So let's bring it to last episode. Maybe that's why they don't kill themselves so much. I'm just tying all the books together here. Final takeaways. Quote, it's just plain dumb. Get into your man's mindset. If a man is willing to be your boyfriend at length, live with you, be an involved father, or give you a ring, he has already taken himself off the player's list. Damn, that's a good way to put it. Let's stop playing any head games here. Can you get a man to stop being a player? Stop thinking about rings and shit. It's are you doing something that's so great that he doesn't care about other girls anymore? That's a new way to look at it. Quote, that's it in a nutshell. Every man knows this is coming up the road for him. He may not be ready for it now, but if he's not ready for it now and you are, then you don't have a good match. Quote, So why waste all your valuable years on something that's not where you want it to go? Instead, you should seek out someone else who wants to go where you're going. This is a stoic end, bro. Never live in fear. Women are living in fear that their man will leave them, and dudes are living in fear that they won't get laid anymore. <laughs> Dude, that's fucking what it is. Yeah, I just cracked the code. Every dude knows. I know this in my heart of hearts. You know the blowjob stop. <laughs> and worse than that, you know the sex stops. So that's what it is, bro. Men are scared that we're never going to have sex again. When you put that ring on, it's like cutting your dick off. <laughs> Yo, that's the bottom line, bro. Is you fucking or is you ain't? Ladies and gentlemen, act like a lady. Think like a man. There it is, Steve Harvey. <laughs> Loved it. Maybe on the reaction this month for the Patreon, we watch some Family Feud. Get subscribed over there, patreon.com slash niche one dollar. Harry Schwant if you want some free memes. Next week on the show, we have got a mystery edition. That's basically it. Let's get a random soundboard effect to close the loop. The show is the GOAT. Nick Munez, and this is when I would normally sign off. End. All right, show's over. Go home. Uh, I promised you guys I'll give you fucks an extra 20 minutes. <laughs> I mean, we literally have zero topics. This is going to be the most dry banter between one person and himself you've ever fucking heard.
why do we do it, man? Us fucking YouTubers? I mean, like, we're out here on the battlefield every day. YouTube wants you putting up, like, two, or they say up to three videos a week now. Even though they don't push it. This is literally the only thing I want to tell people if I had an extra 20 minutes. They don't show your videos to your subscribers. So anybody who's trying to be a YouTuber, this shit is fucked. Same thing with Instagram. Bro, I'm down to getting... 700 views out of my 17 and a half thousand followers they only push it to that many accounts would you like to boost your post how about i boost a fucking rocket into silicon valley <laughs> no soundboard this is all organic for 20 minutes fucking youtube dude yeah that's maybe a minute there so we'll switch topics i'm gonna throw in a fresh dip mm, grizzly when did I start dipping? That's a great question, Nick. <laughs> this shit's gonna make me insane. This is dead air is reminding me of what it feels like to bomb very hard. This is why you go up with material. I'm working a new muscle right now. I don't know if you guys could hear the sandstorm. We're not in Kansas anymore. God damn, bro. Can't let, or actually, if you're here behind the scenes after the show, between episode or uh, chapter four and five, there, I went out and peed in this sandstorm, and the wind was so heavy it blew onto my hoodie, and there actually was piss in my eye. It's a first for me. I'm seeing clearly than ever. Remember that Native American butch? She fucking cured a guy's blindness with her spit and a couple of leaves. All right, I won't be the fucking pulling from book knowledge. Let's see what's on my phone. Some quotes. That's good. About the dull masses. Fuck that. I mean, I got ten other topics, but is this just me looking through my phone now? Basically, because people pretend to be going off the top of their head when they actually plan shit out. <laughs> Socrates. There is only one good knowledge and one evil. Ignorance. One knowledge... I like that quote better. The only teacher is the enemy. I'm going to let you sit with that one. The only teacher is the enemy. Literally, as I said that, there's a park ranger coming down the road right now. Let's see if I could get some confrontation for some good content. Go out there and piss on the back of his truck. <laughs> There's tumbleweeds going by. Oh, he drove by. No, come back. I want to harass you. He's got a pickup truck with a bed full of garbage. Bro, when I lived in L.A., motherfuckers with pickup trucks, they would be homeless, but they would, like, put cardboard on the back of the pickup truck to basically turn it into a garbage truck, and then they would fill it up with empty cans, just go around and go through people's trash all day. Think about it. <laughs> Those aluminum cans are five cents a can. You s know one guy who drinks a 12-pack of Dewey a night and just go grab his pack of Mountain Dew, grab his neighbor who probably drinks a pack of Dr. Pepper, and you got a couple bucks there. You know, a fucking a fifth of <laughs> a Kentucky Deluxe is $3. And as a homeless person, that's all you need to make it through the night. <laughs> These motherfuckers. <gasps> That's some crazy shit, the way people would turn their cars. You must have seen in L.A. how people make two-story homeless complexes. What the heck? <laughs> I bet you could turn a sedan into, like, a, a pop-up camper of some sorts. Nobody's enjoying this. Let's find a new topic. <laughs> Here's the wind. Still hear that? What do fuck? Here's from Thomas Paine. Tyranny, like hell, is not easily conquered. Yet we have this consolation with us that the harder the conflict, the more glorious the triumph. Damn, that shit's deep. So even though tyranny is something to overcome, it doesn't mean all obstacles are good. Hmm, Thomas Paine, this guy's thinking. 
obstacles. Maybe we do like a Tough Mudder, but it's in pudding so that people have something to eat while they do it. <laughs> in this 20 minutes, I'm going to come up with the world's best business idea. This shit is insane, bro. Like, you go 20 miles to the west, and it's fucking... This is snow instead of uh, sand. Weather talk with Nick. Socrates, to find yourself, think for yourself. What do I got lined up on DJ? Sandstorm in a sandstorm. I did that on purpose. <laughs> I guess that's not going to make us get to the 20-minute mark. What song is next? This is going to be a mystery. Ooh, some more house. That's what my mind would be doing right now. Recuperating, but instead I have to do a full fucking hour. <laughs> I'd probably be reading some shit. Yeah, let's see what's good on 4chan. 4chan! Oh, Chanu Fo. Well, here knew how to say four in Chinese, because that would make a good Chinese joke. Oh, and don't tell me I have no reception. <laughs> Alright, what else is in my phone? Just a bunch of fucking quotes. Hey, maybe something about creativity here will spark my ideas. Michael Singer. There is nothing more important to true growth than realizing you are not the voice in your mind. You are the one who hears it. <laughs> I don't know why I put that under creativity. That's some Eastern crap. But, bro, yeah, I just need to listen to hear what the next idea is. So I need two other idiots talking while I could just fucking sit here and think of what the next funny thing is. I basically just described every fucking comedy podcast, so at least this is something different. Bro, there's this wind is like tipping a prairie dog over. I'm sorry, you can't see it. <laughs> Obviously, that's the plan, bro. I told you uh, Steve Harvey, he lived in a car when he was 27. I'm going to turn 27 in May. See, this is what you want. You want me to just get my guard down, then I fucking tell you all my secrets. Yeah, I'm going to be living in a car this year. And I'm saying that we, we could uh, squat up with some of the boys on the East Coast who are down to just fucking talk about nothing for an hour. Because that's the new wave, bro. Like, nobody pops off anymore, even in the fucking... Uh, comedy podcast circuit you got a fucking Andrew Schultz or any of these guys that just get their gang of dudes and then buy private jets <laughs> you know what I'm saying I'll let you guys into my fucking group of friends what are we even doing then there's some legendary motherfuckers that I could introduce everyone to <laughs> let's see what's next on the radio Does this piss anybody else off, Apple? Their fucking random algorithm tries to guess what mood you're in. If I click to random, put something random. It's just doing more EDM now. So you have to automatically go and press shuffle. Bro, I'm so retarded that I thought in college I could be a Spotify playlist curator. <laughs> Here we go. Reset. Remember G Easy? Wow, that's got to be some synchronicity. That's a gift from the comedy gods. Fucking Andrew Schultz. That's a G Easy knockoff right there. <laughs> Any tall, skinny guy that refuses to exercise, they fall into the G Easy archetype after time. Where you just get skinnier and you do that undercut haircut. 
Jeezy, bro. That guy had his moment in the sun. Let's fucking go. Jeezy. He's still, like, putting out songs with Halsey. You know who's got their time in the sun right now? Mac DeMarco. It almost pisses me off. Like, Boulder people are obsessed. He's a depressed John Denver. (laughs) See, I need the soundboard or something. That was good, bro. I'm going to make a bit out of that. Mac DeMarco. Motherfucker Jones just makes sad songs. Blue boy, I'm in the chamber of reflection. Dude, shut up. Make something beautiful about the Rocky Mountains. You're here and you're depressed. I can't talk. (laughs) Holy shit. Got some skiing in. I just told you about that, but that's some weather shit talking about 20 miles west. Winter Park. Oh, fuck. I like Copper Mountain more, bro. I almost died driving through Berthound Pass. (laughs) So, like, you got to go 5,000 feet up to 10,000 feet to go back down to 5,000 feet. And they cram it all into maybe six miles. I don't have four-wheel drive. I don't have a, a car with tires that are real. This shit almost killed me. But I had to get my sweet turns in on the pow, yo. So, yeah, even, like, snow bums are starting to piss me off. (laughs) But, like, I could see myself just succumbing to that. But I have too much fucking ambition. It's so gay. I said it in the show, bro. We all know how to be happy. But it costs you your everything. (laughs) Skiing, living in a van. How fucking great would that be? Copper Mountain Legendary. Even like Crested Butte Aspen, they have better back bowls. But I think it's just bigger. This is going to be the Ski Bum Hour with Nick Munez. (laughs) Damn, Colorado. There were other savages like me sending it over the pass. Irrelevant. That's got to be my favorite noise, though. I figured that out a couple weeks ago. Yeah! And then you see somebody jump off a cliff down fucking into the snow. It's pure happiness, and you just hear it in the distance. Yay! People are sending it. <laughs> Beautiful. I think that's something people are missing on the fucking East Coast. It's kind of like um, surfers have it on the West Coast. It's a different realm, dude. The mountain man. <laughs> I'm saying it's a different, like, headspace you get yourself into. You don't think about work. Of course, I fucking had to take some B-roll shots while I was up there. (laughs) Nothing beats it. So I guess I figured out something I like in this past ten minutes. But, um, this show isn't good. (laughs) Why do you want me for a full hour? Just joking. What song is next? This is topical. YouTubers recognize that guitar riff. This is Joji. Run. We'll give him one more sound bite after this wind dies down. Bro, YouTubers, people who watch YouTube love Joji. He's the guy that put on the pink costume and... (laughs) He would go and pretend to have seizures in public places. And now get this. He has epilepsy. (laughs) That's fucking cosmic right there. He made his nut off of pretending to be broken and now he's broken. (laughs) Damn, son. Whoa. (laughs) Joji. It's not bad. This riff rules. So that's a lane. You got dudes like Cody Ko. He's being a rapper now too, but he kind of went the funny angle with it. Like some little dicky shit. Cody Ko, that guy also, he's trying to be a DJ now. <laughs> but he's like making videos out of it. This is how easy it is to be a DJ. Not a bad grift, fucking Cody Ko. Let's see who's next. YouTube, you better allow music soon. This is funky. (laughs) 
pretty fresh. I'm hoping the music doesn't. It definitely is coming in one sound. Uh, I'm only putting the mic up to one stereo. That has been the music hour with DJ Dish inside the ditch. You want inside the niche? I'll shove this microphone up my anal sphincter. Jimmy it past my rectum. Fucking shove that schwanz a little bit further up towards my colon. What do you think the inside of your gut sounds like? <laughs> you know how prairie dogs dig holes? Maybe they would, like, climb into your butt. <laughs> if you give a... That, that was going nowhere. <laughs> if you give a prairie dog an asshole. I'd be out here. I'd be looking at mountains and shit. I'd just be chilling, you know? You know, it scares me barbed wire. That's a random thought. Thank you for the universe. You ever climb fences when you were a kid and you're always scared that someone was going to fucking clip their sack? Bro, and there was... <laughs> We had a detective that lived a couple doors down when I was a kid. And he told me this story that a kid, when he was, I think he was just to scare me. Sandstorm. Kid was running away and he fucking ripped open his ball sack on a fucking fence. <laughs> you see, I'm just going to start dip, dipping into stage jokes now because I feel like I'm bombing. He also told me, I can't. <laughs> Being a detective, bro, that's, I don't, I'm not saying I would do it. I'm not considering it, bro. Being a detective, though, put yourself in that headspace. You have to become the killer. Mind Hunter, the book. Who would want to do that? But you actually go home kind of feeling like you did something. Except you're thinking about the body you just saw. Anyone know how to fix this? One of my tires is at 25% and the rest are at 40 PSI. If you know how to fix that, please write in to nmunis at gmail.edu. It's not my email. <laughs> you know, the Nick's Nonfiction Scholarship, that's still going. All right, these motherfuckers, I need a topic. Rich gang lifestyle. Cats. Cats are kind of cute. I'm just scroll on the internet now. I'll give you fucking th three more minutes of my time. Winter in Japan. Japan. Japan kind of reminds me of Boulder. Motherfuckers here, they're always on the side of the highway cleaning up. People are actually proud to live somewhere. That's nice. You know, rather than destroying your body every day in community. <laughs> I talked about <laughs> the chubby chaser on the episode today. Holy shit. This guy's fucking metal, bro. He's got this Dr. Sook's skateboard. He just fucking drinks and rolls around town. He has a kid. What are you doing? <laughs> he says he's sponsored. I guess that's a life of a skater, bro. <laughs> Bang fat bitches, pay alimony, and hit dank nollies. I'm gonna fucking Christ air this gap real quick, McTwist off of the curb. That's basically me making fun of myself about snowboarding. <laughs> and that will bring us to the end of the first ever bonus section. Let me know what you guys think. The Knickers, if you're still there, literally, I fucking love you. Nick Munez here, Harry Schwan on Instagram for memes that are from this brain guys i love you i'm gay and all that shit i'm very thankful that you're still here patreon.com slash the niche for some more thought out stuff i love you all i'll see you all in seven short days peace